Now let's talk about a shape of a shadow. An object can cast shadows of different shapes depending on how you position it. For example, if this is in the horizontal position and it's a, if it's in the horizontal position, it is going to have a shadow like this. If you have the light source above it, and then if it is in the word, if it's in the vertical position, then you're going to have a light source, a light shadow like this. It's you're going to have a shadow like this. Now, why are shadows formed? Shadows are formed because light travels in straight lines. So, you know, for example, this is an object which is blocking the light, and that is why a darker region sh shadow is basically formed over here. Well, you see that light travels in a straight line. It did not bend, right? You know, this did not happen. If, for example, light is coming from here, it bent it, and then it, and then it uh, hit the screen. Rather, what happened was that it traveled in a straight line, and now this thing basically blocked the light. That is why a darker region is basically formed over here. So since light travels in straight line, it cannot bend, right? Over here, it is not bending around the object to reach the screen. So in order, it has reached the screen in a straight line. Therefore, an area of darkness is formed as over here. But how do you know light travels in a straight line? So you do it yourself at your home. Take a piece of pipe, pa um, pass a light through it, and then you can easily see. But when you have the pipe which is bended, then you can't see the light, even though the light source is over here. You cannot see. Why? Because light only travels in the straight line. It cannot bend. It can never bend. Over here, light is traveling in a straight line. Now let's talk about, let's discuss the review questions. I'm not going to tell you the answers over here. I'm just going to give you some hints. So classify the following into two groups, light sources and non-light sources. Well, that's easy. I don't even need to give a hint for that. You have already done this, right? So for example, star is a light source. It produces its own light. Sun is an example of a star. Moon, we all know, does not produce its own light. You can do for the others as well. An owl hunts at night, suggests so why it has big round eyes. Well, look at the condition at night. What do you think? What is the light like? Draw arrows to represent light rays to, to show how the eye can see the fire and the tree. Well, you know, this fire is a light source. So the light from the fire travels in a straight line and directly enters our light, our eyes. That's why we can see the fire. Well, this tree is not a light source. Why is that we can see this? So this light, this fire is a light source. So it basically falls on this tree in a straight line and then it gets reflected in another direction. So it travels in a straight line and reaches the eyes. Draw three arrows in the diagram below to show how the torch light is reflected by mirrors before entering the eye. So, well, reflection is when something moves in the opposite direction, but in a straight line, right? So light source, light enters in a straight line. Now there's a mirror, so reflection is going to take place. So this light now travels and changes direction over here. Then it hits again, it is going to get reflected, and then it reaches the eye. So this, even though this is, this setup is in which we have a lot of bending, but still we can see the light and that is because reflection makes it travel in a straight line. So for example, over here it was straight, over here it was straight, and over here it was straight, right? The photograph below shows a set of day and night curtains. So which set of curtains is made of material which allows some light to pass through? Explain why this set of curtains requires such a material. So day curtains are basically used when I want to have light in the house, right? I don't want to block the light. So this one is a day curtain, right? So the curtain is made of material which allows some light to pass through. So day curtain are basically made from this material. And then which set of curtains are made? I can't see that because of this. So which does not allow light to pass through. Explain why such a material is used for this curtain. So night curtains are made from the material which blocks, uh, which blocks most of the light. 
Look at the windows in your classroom. What material is or are used to make the window? So it's a simple glass, right? Think of it, write wherever you want to. Think about your class. Do the windows in your cla uh, class allow most of the light, some of the light or no light at all to pass through them. So think about your window and think whether it allow, how much light does it allow to pass through? Do the windows reflect light? Well, yes, even the dull surfaces reflect light, but windows, they're still a little shiny. With your classmate, discuss which type of material, transparent, which allows all the light to pass through, translucent, translucent, translucent which allows um, most of the light to pass through and blocks some, uh, or, or opaque, which blocks all the light, is more suitable for each of the following purposes. To wrap a surprise gift that you don't want the other person to know what exactly is in the gift, right? What exactly is the gift and what exactly is being wrapped. So what are you going to use? Are you going to use a transparent paper, translucent or opaque? To wrap a textbook so that the title can be clearly seen. So you do that, right? Lamination, why do you do lamination? So what do you do it with? With a transparent or a translucent or opaque? To make a lamp shade so that the light from the lamp is not too glaring, so that is not too bright. You want to, you don't want to block all the light, but you want to block some of the light. Which material, aluminum foil or tissue paper cast a darker shadow? So remember, when light is completely blocked, it forms a darker shadow, as in case of cardboard. And when light is um, partially blocked, it forms a light shadow. So explain your answer. You can easily do that. I've already, dis I did discuss that in the previous slides. Shadows are different from reflections. Complete the table below to differentiate between shadows and reflection. Use the questions in the table to guide you. How is a shadow formed? So shadow is formed when there's a, the, the light is completely or partially blocked. And then reflection, when, light falls in an object and it then bounces off in another direction. Is it dark? Is shadow dark? Is reflection dark? You can easily answer that, right? Think time. Ali shines a torch on an upright stick which casts a shadow. Now this is very important. That's why I included it. Ali shines a torch on an upright stick which casts a shadow on a screen behind it. Ali changes the distance between the stick and the screen. For each position, he measures the height of the shadow formed. The table below shows the result. So when distance between stick and the screen is two centimeter, the height of the shadow is 11. As the distance between the stick and the screen increases, you see that the height of the shadow increases. So now you have to see this even came in the first term exams, a table like this. So you need to interpret the data. You need to see, look at the data. You need to look at the trend and then you have to infer, right? So for example, now what I can infer is that as the distance is increasing, the height of the shadow is increasing. So now I want, now I want to see by, by what magnitude or by what amount, right? So when this increases by two centimeter, there's an increase of one centimeter. When this increases by two centimeter, there's an increase of one centimeter. What can you conclude from the result? So this trend shows that as the distance between the stick and the screen increases, the height of the shadow also increases. Infer what the height of the shadow will be when the distance between the stick and the screen is 11. Right now it's eight. Then after the increment of two, it will be 10. So this, this should be 15. Now after the increment of two, this should be 12. And this should be 16, right? So between 11, between, between 11 and, so between 11 and, so between 10 and 12, there comes 11. So this is going to be, uh, so between 15 and 16, there comes 15.5. So this is going to be 15.5 centimeter. Okay. Now from the results in the table, find out the height of the stick. Well, the height, for example, when there's two centimeter, this is 11 centimeters. So when there is zero distance, that is when there's zero centimeter, this is going to be 10. So the original length is 10. I hope this is going to help you out. The 